Hi, uh, on this uh, demonstration video, I'm going to show you how to uh, navigate into your exam, what you need to do to actually get into the test, and then a quick tour of what the test interface looks like. This is a fictional exam. Uh, that's why we've got a titled Backup Course uh, for the North Carolina Department of Agriculture. Uh, but the look and feel of everything should be nearly identical to what you experience when you go through and take your actual test, whatever that test might be. The only difference here will be the title of the course is different and the exam questions will be fictional rather than the real thing. Um, the, there's a number of written instructions at the start of your, uh, before you actually get into your test. I highly recommend that you read all of this information, uh, but to give you the three main highlights, uh, the first is that you have to be on a computer. So you can be on a PC or a Mac, and it can be a desktop or a laptop computer, but it has to be a computer. It cannot be a smartphone or a tablet or an iPad or anything like that. The second thing is that you have to be on the Google Chrome web browser. It can't be Firefox or Safari or Microsoft Internet Explorer or any other web browser. It has to be Google Chrome. And then the third thing is that you have to use the Proctorio, uh, Proctorio uh, Chrome extension. And there's gonna be a few different spots where you can install that, but if you haven't yet installed it, you'll see right here under the navigating, um, uh, you know, navigation section, you'll see secure exam proctor. So if I click on that, it's gonna take me to another page and I'm gonna install it in my browser now. And you're gonna see the first thing is it's making sure that I'm on the right type of web browser, so I'm on Google Chrome. The second thing is it's gonna prompt me to install this, so it's gonna take me to a new tab and I'm gonna keep clicking through. So I'm gonna say click here and I'm now in the Google Chrome uh, web store and I'm gonna click this blue button at the top right where it says add this to Chrome. So I'm adding this to Chrome and I'm gonna give her permission to add, uh, add this extension to my computer. It's gonna take a few seconds to install it and a little notification is gonna pop up here in the top corner. So it's gonna say this, this has been added to Chrome and if I want, I can go and later on and remove that from Chrome. I'm gonna go back to the original tab that I was in, in my browser and I'm gonna hit the back button and I'm now back, in my, uh, now I'm back on my exam, and you'll notice that the, uh, the little link down here disappeared because it now recognizes that it's been installed. If you skip that step, it's gonna force you to, to install the extension before you actually go into your test. Um, so you'll, you'll, if you miss that or you don't watch the video uh, to this point or anything, it's gonna, it's gonna prompt you and it won't let you in either way, so you're, you're in good hands. It'll just kind of, uh, it'll, it'll make sure you don't miss anything important. Um, I'm gonna go into the test itself and I'm gonna authenticate the proctoring just to show you what that, um, that looks like. So I've done this quiz before, um, but I'm gonna reattempt the quiz right now. And when I go through, uh, you'll only have one attempt at the quiz, but uh, the, uh, before you begin, you're gonna, I recommend that you read all of these written instructions. Uh, this is basically saying what's gonna be recorded. So your webcam's gonna be recorded, your desktop environment, your audio environment, all of that's gonna be recorded as part of the proctoring environment to allow you to take your, your test from your home or your office. Um, and it's, there's gonna be some basic checks that the computer does before it lets you into the test. The first series of those is, um, it's not gonna allow me to have all these tabs open at the top of my, uh, the top of my browser. So I'm gonna click right here where it says click here, and it's gonna close all those out for me. The good news is, is that uh, I'll, all of those will open back up as soon as my exam is done. And then the second thing is that uh, even though you can't see it, I've got two monitors plugged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the second one and uh, only after I do that is the button in the, the bottom right corner, um, it's gonna allow me to proceed into my test. But until I do though, I fix those two things, it's not gonna allow me to start my pre-exam checks. Um, it is gonna notify me that I'm on battery power, which I'm not concerned about. I have a docking station, but this demo only takes a few minutes and I'm not gonna run out of battery. If you are taking your exam on battery, I would highly recommend that you make sure that you've got enough battery to make it through the duration of your test. Otherwise, find a, a, you know, a, a power supply that you can plug into. I'm gonna go into the exam checks themselves. So it's gonna make sure that my webcam is working, my microphone is working, my internet connection, and you're gonna see this screen pop up and it's gonna ask me to share my screen. So I'm gonna do that uh, by, you'll notice the share button is grayed out. And I'm gonna, the way I'm gonna get that to turn uh, a blue so I can click on it is I'm gonna actually have to click right here where you see my mouse. I'm gonna click and I've now clicked on the image of my screen. And I, what I'm telling is Google Chrome has permission to share that image or that video stream uh, with the proctoring service. So I'm gonna click that and now I've authenticated my desktop environment and my Wi-Fi connection is stable enough and so it's gonna let me into the test. So now you see what my webcam sees of me. Um, before I go into my test and authenticate, it's gonna warn me I should use the bathroom, get some water, get comfortable, get ready to take a test. You shouldn't expect to have to leave during, um, during that exam. 
And as I go through the test, it's gonna authenticate a few pieces of information. You should have an ID card ready uh, because one of the first things it's gonna do is, uh, is ask for a, a photo of your ID. I've taped over my, uh, my driver's license number and address because this video will be publicly available, but uh, you should not do that for your test. The only ones that will see your ID are uh, North Carolina State employees or the proctor who's reviewing your exam results after your test and everything will be maintained securely. Uh, it's next gonna ask me to take a picture of myself with my camera. So I'm gonna click this camera test and pause momentarily as it takes a few pictures of me. And uh, it's next gonna ask me to sign something and there's gonna be this room scan. So it's kind of showing you what this room scan, it's got this fiction, fictional room here. I'm just gonna show you what the room scan looks like. Um, you're basically gonna pick your computer up or your webcam up and you're gonna spin around in a 360 degree circle to show what your room looks like. So I'm gonna click I understand and I'm gonna sign this statement that says I'm the person who is actually taking this test. And I agree to all the terms associated with being allowed to enter this test and I'm gonna uh, click accept. And now I'm in my test environment. And uh, the, the very last thing it's gonna do before I start my test is I'm gonna have to do the room scan. So I'm gonna click this. And now that I've clicked this, I'm gonna pick up and I'm gonna slowly spin in this 360 degree circle. And then uh, when, I'm, when I'm done with that, uh, I will be able to go into my test. It should recognize, there we go. So I've done the 360 degree circle and now I'm in my test. As far as the test in interface looks like, uh, the first thing is you'll have a clock at the top, like you can see in bright red here, and that's going to be in bright red. Um, and it's gonna stay with me as I scroll through my test. You'll also notice that um, I've got the, the quiz tools. So this is the what the proctoring service overlaid on your exam has. Uh, and uh, I, I, with that, a plus and minus button so I can zoom in and out of the exam content. And I've got, if I run into any technical issues during the exam with the exam interface itself, I can start a live chat and tech support right in the test will uh, be able to accommodate me. As, and I can minimize this and, and move it around my screen if I find it to be distracting, or, and then I can you know, uh, open it back up if, if I need to be able to access any of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize it now just to get it out of the way and show you what the exam interface looks like. Uh, so you've got a couple different ways to navigate your test. In the top right, you'll have a navigation where you can see all of your questions that you've answered or not answered. Anything with a white box is a question you've not answered. Um, so if I you know, click question one, two, and I skip question three, and I answer questions four and five, and let's say I, I flag question four. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is that immediately there's a flag, that's the red flag that's showed up on question four, on both next to the question and in the navigation panel. And what'll happen is I can, I can move on to the next screen up here in the top right by clicking finish attempt or at the bottom of the screen by clicking finish attempt. And when I do this, you're gonna see that navigation update. And because I didn't answer question three, that box is still white. And uh, because I flagged question four, there's a flag next to number four and there's a flag next to number four here in the top right. It also says not yet answered next to question three. If I wanna jump right back to that question, I can click the three next to that question or I can click the box here in the top right corner and it'll take me back to it. When you submit your exam results, if you've left things flagged, it has no bearing or no impact on, your, uh, on the grading of your exam. So you can leave things flagged. Uh, and if you run out of time, the exam will auto submit for you and it will submit with the answers that you've, you've uh, submitted at that point in time. So if you've answered 87 of 100 questions, it will basically give you the last 13 questions wrong, and then you'll be graded on the 87 questions that you did answer. So you may still pass, even though you didn't necessarily finish every question on the test. If you don't run out of time, uh, you've got the opportunity to return to your attempt, uh, to go back and answer any questions, or you can click to any specific question, and it'll take you right back there. But if you want to finish, um, I would you would click Submit All and Finish, and then you have to submit it one more time. And when I hit this, it's going to submit to my exams and you'll get, you, you know, your results will be transmitted to the state. Everything, the proctoring uh, will be reviewed within three days and you'll be contacted by the state with your results within three days time. Um, so when I submit this, it's gonna end this video, um, but hopefully this has been helpful for you and good luck on your exam.